For this video, I'll be working through question two of the level three 2017 electricity exam. Question two. In a car engine, an induction coil is used to produce a very high voltage spark. An induction coil acts in a similar way to a transformer. The diagram below shows the circuit arrangement that will enable a spark to be produced in the spark plug when the switch is turned on. The induction coil has 50 turns in the primary and 8,000 turns in the secondary. Both coils are wrapped around an iron core. The primary coil of the induction coil can be modelled by resistance series with an ideal inductor as shown in the diagram below. So that's the primary, I'll just write primary circuit here. Primary circuit, which is that one there. The following graph shows a current charging with time after the switch is closed. So it's there there's a real and that there's the solid line which you'll use soon. Right. Question A. State the voltage, the value of the voltage across the ideal inductor once the current has reached maximum value of 5 amps. So when the current is stable, there's no voltage across the inductor. Because it's a DC circuit, eventually when you first switch, flick the switch, it produces a large change in flux through the inductor, which causes a back EMF or a reverse voltage or whatever you want to call it. That opposes the supply, which I suppose comes from the positive side of the battery, which is that side. It opposes the supply initially exactly. So when you flick the switch, you'll have 12 volts across the inductor facing the other way. And then as the rate of change of flux decreases, um, the voltage across the inductor decreases until the rate of change of current basically approaches zero and there's no voltage across this whatsoever and that's when the maximum current flows because that's when this is just basically a piece of wire so the answer is zero volts right explain why the current does not immediately reach the maximum value as soon as the switch is closed so i'm going to write the answer and then i'll discuss it Right, so what I've said is when the switch is closed, there is a rapid change in current. So that's when you flick the switch, all of a sudden, boom, the circuit starts going, you get rapid flow of electrons, you get rapid change in current. From the EMF is equal to minus the change in flux divided by the change in time. 
Um, this is Faraday's law with a little bit of Lenz's law tacked on. Um, this rapidly change in current generates a large change in flux. And the inductor, which in turn generates a voltage which opposes the supply. This back EMF, the opposing voltage, is why the current takes time to reach the maximum value. Um, just a side note, if you don't know what change of flux is, it's just change in magnetic field through an area. So flux is that how much magnetic field is going through a set area. Right, next question. Um, immediately after the switch is closed, the back EMF across the idle inductor is 12 volts. Look at that, it exactly opposes the supply, what did I tell you? Um, use the dotted line on the graph on page 6 to calculate the self-inductance of the ideal inductor. So on your formula sheet you have, um, this here is the old way where they used to say um, voltage used to be thought as a, of a force, um, it's not anymore but this E means electromo electromotive force and really it's just the voltage. So we're going to be using uh, the Voltage or electromagnetic fault force is equal to the minus inductance to divide times the rate of change in current divided by the rate of change in time because we have the current time and we can figure out the rate of change just as just the gradient. So what we're going to do is we're going to write this is essentially the EMF or the voltage equals minus L change in current divided by change in time. What we're trying to find is the self-inductance. We're trying to find the inductance L. Um, so let's just rearrange that. L is equal to minus E because of times, oh, in fact, still there. I'm going to move the time up to the top, change in time, change in current. Right, and that is going to give me minus 12 because that is the EMF across it. So that's the back EMF which is 12 volts um, times, well what I'm going to do is on my graph I'm going to go, oh look at that, it's going to go change in time is going to be 0 to 0.1 and change in current is going to be 0 to 6. So we're going to use rise over run, so we're going to, well time, uh, it's not actually rise over run, it's change in time, so it's 0 minus 0 0.1 divided by 0 minus 0, no it's 6 isn't it? Brackets around that, brackets around that, because that's y1, oh, is that y1? No, that's x1 minus x2 and y1 minus y2. It's all like you find the gradient of a graph, but it's backwards this time. Um, and that will give you 0 0.2 henrys. There we have it. Next question. Sparks require a very high voltage to be produced. Explain how it is possible for a spark to be, to be produced across the gap in the spark plug when the switch is open. So this is a pretty open-ended question with a, quite a few ways to answer it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to answer it in all the ways you could possibly answer it. I'm going to write it all down and then I'll discuss it. So pause the video now and then play it once I've written everything. So what I've said is, um, I'll start off with the beginning. So when the first, when the switch is first open, this causes a large change in current across the primary inductor, which causes a large change in flux across the primary. Or well, this should be primary. Uh, yeah, it's primary inductor. I'll leave it as primary. That's fine. Um, the secondary inductor experiences this large change in flux because they're coupled right beside. So we have. The primary inductor, which is experiencing a large change of flux, we have the secondary, and they're right beside each other. So the magnetic field, the change in flux, goes through the secondary, um, and thus generates a large EMF as your EMF or your voltage is minus the change in flux divided by the change in time. So this that, that answers the first part. This should really be number two. Um, Oh, this is this is really what I should have said next. The large number of turns on the secondary steps up the voltage by a factor of eight thousand over fifty. And if you go to your formula sheet, you have where is the 
in primary over in secondary gives you v primary over v secondary so depending on how many it depends on your ratio so if you have a an 8000 to 50 ratio um, for every 50 turns um, you, you just get the, the number divided by 50 and that'll tell you how much is going to be going through um, or how much you're going to step up your voltage and you'll step down your current by that factor as well um, right so as for the change in time, so this is sort of an extra side bit in the secondary circuit, the spark gap has very high resistance. So if we go over here, this spark gap here, it's not a closed, it's, it's an open loop circuit. So this spark gap um, here has really, really high resistance, but not infinite. So it's about a million volts, or no, three million volts per meter. So half a meter, you're looking at one and a half million volts. Um, or well, that would be like a millimetre, so you're looking sort of 10,000 volts. So if you just stepped up the voltage by um, 160, you get about 2,000 volts, which isn't enough. So as for the change in time, the secondary, the spark gap has a very high resistance, so the time constant for the circuit will be very low because you have an inductor basically in a, in a circuit. So you have really, really high resistance. You can have a really, really low time constant. This small time constant cut time constant uh, constant coupled with a large uh, change in flux generates a very large EMF. Um, still that formula again. Another side note, the secondary loop isn't a closed loop, so Kur Kirchhoff laws don't apply, meaning the sum of the voltages don't have to equal zero. So if that voltage there and that voltage there, they don't have to add to zero. So this this can be well, let's just leave it at that. I'll just leave it at that.